It all started out as an ordinary working day for Gary Johnson, who was driving his excavator at a quarry in Oxfordshire. He was clearing the clay when, all of a sudden, he hit a bump. It turned out to be a huge footprint, and no animal from today could have possibly left it. Then, Gary noticed another huge footprint, just 10 feet ahead, and then another one. He soon realized those could be dinosaur footprints. And he was right. There were a total of about 200 huge footprints from 166 million years ago, or the middle of the Jurassic area, crisscrossing the limestone floor. Scientists started digging at the location in June 2024. The longest trackways they found are around 500 feet long. It wasn't the first major discovery in the area. Back in 1997, they found 40 dinosaur tracks nearby while digging in a limestone quarry. This time, the team took 20,000 photos of the new prints and made 3D models using flying drones. In total, there were five pathways at that site. Four of them were made by sauropods, which were huge plant-eating dinosaurs that walked on all four legs. Their footprints kind of look like giant elephant prints, only way bigger, because these dinos could grow up to 60 feet long, about two times as long as a London bus. The fifth track might have come from a megalosaurus, a carnivore. Its footprint looks like the kind you'd see in a cartoon. It's called a tridactyl, which means it has three big, clear toes. Hey, just like me. Heh, <laughs> kidding. Unlike previous dinos, these guys could walk and even run on there too. Back then, the area they lived in was like a warm, shallow lagoon, and these dinosaurs squished through the mud, leaving their footprints behind. The footprints can help us learn how fast the dinosaurs moved, how they walked, how big they were, and what kind of environment they lived in. You can't learn all that from bone fossil records, which makes this discovery super important. Scientists think that a big storm helped save the prints in such great condition. It could have dumped a lot of mud on top of them, keeping them safe from being washed away. Just several months after the Oxfordshire discovery, scientists found over 260 matching dinosaur footprints more than 3,700 miles apart on different continents, in Brazil and in Cameroon. When they studied these prints, they realized they were about the same age and shape and came from the same type of land and plate tectonic contexts. Northeastern Brazil, and what is now Cameroon in Africa, is one of the last tiny land bridges where dinos could cross between the land masses freely before the continent of Gondwana broke away completely, around 120 million years ago. Africa and South America started drifting apart around 140 million years ago, and the South Atlantic Ocean slowly filled the gap between them. As the land split, big basins formed, and rivers and lakes began to fill them up. The footprints were found in those very basins, on both sides of the ocean. Most of the prints were made by three-toed theropods, which were meat-eating dinosaurs. But there were also prints from sauropods and ornithischians, who were herbivores. The plants in those river valleys fed the plant-eaters, which helped build a whole food chain. And the muddy ground helped preserve the dinosaurs' footprints, just like in England. The latest footprint discovery, this time in the Scottish Isle of Skye, helped scientists learn something new about the dino habits. So far, they've found more than 130 footprints at Prince Charles Point. And it turns out that huge meat-eating dinosaurs and their plant-eating prey shared the same water here 167 million years ago. Some of the tracks were made by megalosaurs, meat-eating dinosaurs that were early relatives of the T-Rex. Others were from huge, long-necked plant-eaters. Some of them were three times bigger than an elephant. The scientists looked closely at the footprints to figure out how the dinosaurs walked and moved around. They believed the dinosaurs were hanging out near shallow freshwater lagoons, just like animals today gather around watering holes. Another important discovery from the Isle of Skye is two super-rare fossils that are helping scientists rewrite the whole evolution of mammals. Some shrew-like creatures today live just around one or two years, right? 
Well, those little guys used to stick around for seven years or even longer. Scientists found two nearly complete skeletons of it on sky. One was a grown-up, and the other was a young one. To figure out how these animals lived and grew, scientists used high-tech x-ray scans to look inside the rock and check the teeth, kind of like counting tree rings to find out how old the tree is. The younger creature was still changing to adult teeth, but was already about two years old, which is very unusual for small animals. It lived in the area during the Jurassic period, when sky was warm, tropical, and full of shallow seas and thick forests. Back then, these tiny and strange early mammals were just starting to appear in a world ruled by dinosaurs. But they were the beginning of the long line of mammals that would one day include cats, whales, and humans. Scientists are learning about the final days of dinos from a new fossil site in Argentina. Most of what we know about the impact of that dramatic asteroid hit comes from North America, where T. rex and Triceratops once lived. But now, we get to see what happened further south. The team of scientists working in a local quarry found bones from hadrosaurs, which are pretty rare in South America. Long ago, this desert area was warm and full of plants like ferns and palms. There was a stream flowing through wide, flat lands, which helped bury and preserve the animals that lived there. Back in 2020, scientists were exploring the area when a paleontologist found a dinosaur foot bone. They kept looking even through heavy rain and discovered a whole group of fossils, not just from one dino, but from several of different ages, maybe even a whole herd. Another super important discovery here was a tiny mammal jaw with five teeth found just two hours after searching the site. The jaw came from a small plant-eating mammal. These creatures were about the size of a chipmunk and had very special teeth with ridges and grooves for chewing plants. This was the first time a mammal jaw had ever been found in that whole area, and it made scientists realize the site could tell them more than just dinosaur stories. The team also found a tooth from another dinosaur and a claw from a smaller predator. All the fossils found here could help answer some big scientific questions, like were the dinosaurs already slowly disappearing before the asteroid hit, like they probably did up north? And what happened to the animals that survived the asteroid hit? Several years ago, scientists found another fossil, this time encased in amber, that came back from a time when dinosaurs walked the Earth. The world looked very different. But it also had some surprising things in common with today. Back then, the night skies were also lit up by glowing fireflies, and the dinos probably watched them like we do. The amber is 99 million years old, and this special firefly is only the second one ever found from the Mesozoic era. Finding these kinds of fossils is really hard, because fireflies have soft bodies that don't turn into fossils very well. That makes it tricky for scientists to figure out exactly how and when these beetles started to glow. But now, thanks to the newly found firefly, they believe the glowing started at least 100 million years ago. The fossil helps fill in the gaps in the evolution of fireflies and their ancestors. It shows that important parts, like their glowing bellies, have stayed the same since the middle of the Cretaceous period. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.